Star Weekend here in the Rising Stars last night where uh, he played for Pau Gasol, got beat by the G League team. And um, what? You lost did. to the G League team. <laughs> you didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. to know that. No, I didn't know that. I wasn't watching that. <laughs> it's your job to know it. I'm just I was at the hookah Richard. bar, my boy. Yeah. I was at the hookah bar. <laughs> and, uh, and tonight in the skills competition and... Uh, Hey, look, it's been a pleasure to watch you this uh, this first half of the season. Look forward to seeing what you do tonight in the in the skills competition. But tell me about this. You just turned 20. Tell me about this uh, first year in the NBA and this this first experience uh, being all over the United States, man. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. And uh, it's been a pleasure also to, to be in that court and experience this I mean all these experiences you know uh, I've learned so much in just a couple months more than in any little span like this before in my life and it's I mean it's been just living the dream you know but it's been a lot of challenges it's been hard but I wouldn't want it to be easy Kenny says this all the time that we're products of our environment I say that to say this when I was your age 17 18 19 I watched Patrick Ewan David Robinson Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with all the skills that you have, who did you watch growing up? Man, I mean, I, the thing is, one of my coaches always said I never look myself in the mirror because I've, I've been looking at guys that don't only have the same body as me. You know, I mean, nobody has the same body as me. So I've been watching guards, Steph Curry, LeBron James. I've been watching Yanis, KD. So pretty much everyone without ever wondering if I was allowed to do this because. You know. Victor, you, you, you talk about how difficult it is and what the challenges are. What has been the easy part? What has been the part, not even easy, the one you said, man, this part, I got that part. And when I came in, I, I'm a little surprised, or oh, I knew I had it. Um, it's got to be the, the competitiveness. You know, like, uh, it's sometimes hard to realize this is already the highest level of basketball, apart from playoffs, obviously, right. in the world, you know, and it's, like no, I know. I just know I can mess with the best in the, in the sport now. It's uh, it's a certitude. Before I knew I could do it, but I just had never met this much talent before. But now I know it's uh, like uh, I'm nowhere near, but on the right path, you know, to becoming one of the greats. You know, I said the toughest thing for you this year was gonna be losing. I says I don't know anything about the French league where he was part of. I said, but you. This is probably the first time in your life you ever lost consistently. Or I, lost when he played well. Or, uh, yeah, no, but I'm talking about just losing. So how have you been able to, do, to, to keep your mindset and not let it bother you? I mean, obviously it's going to bother you, but how is it adjusting to losing? So I think actually this has been the, one of the hard things, you know, this season. Um, not only losing, but... Because, you know, every game we still come in the court and we want to win. Like, everyone is locked in. There's no, nobody expects to lose when we step on the court, even when playing is the first seed or the 14th seed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, 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 it has actually been one of the most difficult things is to, to be ready to, for the battle every night, you know. And uh, after that, to, you know, to just get over it because we got another one tomorrow. We got another one 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So this has been one of the toughest battles. And I didn't think this would be as tough in the battle on the mental, mental aspect. I yes. thought it would be harder on the body. Okay. Uh, Victor, tell me this, because when you, when you make your NBA debut, you're a 19-year-old and you've got the oldest coach in the league, Pops in his 70s. Tell me what the relationship's been like. What have you learned about Pop? What did you heard about Pop before playing for Pop? And, and what are your impressions? I mean, years back, obviously, you know, with uh, all the French guys who've been through San Antonio, it's, uh, I mean, I've always thought Pop was the best coach in the world, even way, way years before being drafted. So it's, uh, I had high expectations, but he's, I mean, he's lived up to those expectations in my eyes because he's just been so, first of all, he cares a lot. He hasn't been only a good uh, technical, you know, analyst and coach and smart, you know, he's also been caring about me and actually trying to know me. The, like the first thing, the first thing he talked to me about, it wasn't basketball, you know, he was trying to make me comfortable in, in my new, you know, new country, new city, new everything. What's, uh, what's, the, what's the roughest he's been on you that he really got on you? Mm, I mean, you know, when we talk privately, 
he knows I'm like I, I'm. I understand. I'm. I'm smart. You know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do my best. You know. But sometimes he trying to send messages, and like uh, yeah, sometimes he, like I don't remember maybe two, three months into the season, we were in film in front of everybody, and he goes like, yeah, what. The this. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is what you were doing day one. Why, why did you take? Why did you take a step back? Yeah. You gotta keep getting better. Like so. Yeah. Sometimes he, he sends messages. Like, this. Uh, hey, like it. How, how much time? <laughs> Welcome to cable TV. Hey, hey. How much time? Did you, oh no, sorry. we're good. You're, you're, you're cool, man. Don't worry about it. How much time did you spend in the states before you got to the NBA? How much time? A month? Uh, no, like in your life. How many? How yeah, many times? Did a you, month. A, about a month? Yeah, I went, wow. on, I went on vacation. That's it. Okay. Yeah, 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 eight months before. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Vic, uh, has the great Tim Duncan and David Robinson came and had a conversa conversation with you and showed you a few things? And if so, what? I want to know what they showed you. Yeah, they did. You know, the first, actually, my first night in San Antonio. I've seen them regularly after that, but the first night, uh, t Tim. David Robinson, Sean Elliott, uh, Manu, they, they, they all have dinner with me. And it's, uh, yeah, they shared, they shared a lot, you know, um, about how the conditions were when the, where they were playing and how to, you know, overcome all the, yeah, the hard things, you know, during the season. And uh, I mean, but we just, we just talked and shared personal experiences, you know, that, that was really casual, you know. They told me about the time they didn't have a, a charter and they had to fly commercial to I don't know how many cities a year and like, I'll tell you about that brother I'm the only I'm the only player up here who's flew commercial <laughs> these guys all been private I have one year. you yeah. had one year I have okay one year. hey um, <laughs> look at this I know you you spent some time with our social team yesterday and uh, we got a, we we had the opportunity to hear Victor's uh, Shaq impersonation oh, oh let's yeah, roll this that was good even I haven't seen it <laughs> that's, that's cool Shaq is a great education. Yeah, Because I told him I didn't want to get a, a certain vehicle because of the amount of gas I would have to spend. Yeah. It cost like eighty dollars to fill it up. Fill it up. up. And he right. said, then you when said, when it gets to half, then you put twenty dollars. You bring it back to full. When it gets to half, then you put twenty dollars. You bring it back to full. But if I keep doing, I would have to stop more often and still no, spend eighty. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Why? You're complaining about when it gets to zero, you spend eighty. You're complaining about when it gets to zero, you spend eighty. When it gets to half, you put twenty. And when it gets back to half, you put twenty again. Kenny, it'll be cool. eighty, Kenny. the same amount of gas. Kenny. Kenny. I'm driving the Kenny. same amount of gas. Kenny, the ever human stops once a week for gas, right? <laughs> but you, you only work him twice. You would probably have to stop once every two weeks. <laughs> Don't even try. The average Why isn't he human. laughing? That's the, that was the funniest <laughs> part. The average It's human. called top it off. So yo, yo, yo. Top it so, off. It's called mouth. This is why my gallon. brand is here and do you guys take, are down do there. Do not take this advice from, that's, from that's Dr. Don't it's called yeah. miles hey, per no. gallon. It's called top it off. <laughs> Get an electric car, Shaq. Yeah, people know. Yeah, you top it off. Uh, hey, what are your what are your teammates oh, called? Oh, look at that there, right there. Right? They call do your teammates call you Wimby or do they got another name for you? Marilyn Dubinsky, I don't remember. They call me Vic. Vic. Yeah, more more Vic. Sometimes Wimby. We appreciate you very much. I never I felt that. Yeah, you you guys, that's right. so fun. Good. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Tell hey. Bona I said what's right. up. Look at little oh, fella, man. Hey, little man. Dwarf fella. Dwarf hey, hey, man. Hey, little man. Shaggy, Shaggy might have gave it to you. Hey, little man. about that when he leaves.